More than 400,000 people are living with multiple sclerosis in this country. Thanks so much for joining me today for Living Well with Robin Stoloff, empowering you to live a healthier life. We are talking with someone today who knows a lot about this illness because his mother was diagnosed with it in 1990. Thank you so much for joining us, Michael Bray, owner of Passion Vines and Queen Janes. You have uh, been so dedicated to the cause of MS and trying to find a cure for it through your fundraisers in honor now in memory of your mother who passed recently. And tell me about your experiences with the disease and with your mom. Sure. Yeah, I, mean, I recently uh, wrote an article about the event, and in doing so, it conjured up some memories of, of when I first um, remember my mom telling me that she had MS. And, and one of the events was uh, leaving a grade school basketball game. I was the age of my current son, oldest son, Dylan, 13 years old. And um, I remember seeing her leg drag behind her as we were walking to the car. And I remember asking her, Mom, what, what's wrong with your leg? And her reply was, I don't know. They say it's the disease. So, you know, I have little snippets of that growing up. Um, and so, you know, my mom was diagnosed, as you mentioned, in 1990. And, you know, I'll say, you know, fairly quickly, it, it, a cane was introduced to her everyday life, then a walker, uh, then a wheelchair some of the time. And then that progressed ultimately to a full-time wheelchair. And so, you know, as they say, you know, every disease, no matter what disease you're talking about, it, it, it affects the entire family. Uh, yes. Nobody worse than that of the, the, the patient. But, you know, let me tell you, you know, I lived through it. I, I like to think that I know what it's like uh, to sort of navigate it successfully and, and not so at, at times. But ultimately what my mom shared with me is, whether it was verbally or just role modeled is, you know, how you deal with suffering. And uh, she handled it with grace. She absolutely did. I, I was uh, fortunate enough to know your mom and she certainly was the epitome of grace and elegance and just, just an amazing person. And you have dedicated your life to helping to find a cure for MS. My aunt had MS. Uh, she, she passed due to MS. And uh, I have a friend who has MS and there are varying degrees. Some people are able to live with it and manage it. Yes. And then uh, in other cases, it just progresses. And we really don't know uh, how and why, but we're trying to find out and trying to get a cure for that. And you have a fundraiser that you, that's been going on now for nine years. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, definitely. So this October 5th will be the ninth year of our Write Notes production. And uh, the Write Notes um, was launched nine years ago based on our love for wine, uh, music, also notes, right? And then ultimately the driver of that was to raise money uh, and awareness for multiple sclerosis. Um, you know, so very quickly, the event itself is unlike any other. I mean, it's the largest scale wine tasting in our area, over 100 wines uh, to taste from around the globe. Uh, you're talking about wines that are $9 retail all the way up to $250, $300. Um, there's two tickets. There's a VIP ticket, which gets you in an hour early. Also, uh, you gain access to specific wines. Um, and then the general admission ticket, which, of course, uh, starts an hour later, uh, equally awesome. Um, you know, everybody's greeted with a champagne bar, with a raw bar, with oysters and shrimp and live music and on and on. So, you know, listen, it's if, you know, as, as we often say, if you're, you're going to fundraise, you, you might as well have it taste good. Right. And uh, and for us, you know, it is about raising money and awareness. But at the same time, we might as well have fun doing it. And it's um, a phenomenal event. And, and I know your mom was such a big part of it. And, uh, and you continue it in her memory. And it has raised a lot of money over the years. How much has it raised? Yeah, so we we are north of six hundred thousand um, dollars over nine events, and um, and so you know we're right. We we crossed that half a million mark, which is monumental. Um, and dare I say, are you know uh, are we are we on to a million next, right? And I hope and, so. Uh, and it goes to yeah, the Multiple me. Sclerosis Society, who is using the money to yes. hopefully find a cure. Absolutely. And a large part of what they do, you know, Atlantic County and Cape May County has roughly around 400 to 500 uh, documented cases of MS living in our communities. And, and ultimately, we've been able to position those monies uh, 
towards the Navigator program, which goes directly to helping those who call the MS Society in our area. And so, you know, not a week goes by that I don't get a call from someone seeking help or advice or what's that next step? You know, I'm having trouble. Who do I call? And so uh, I'm really happy to, to know that people are calling the Navigator line and receiving help, you know, whether it's treatment, whether it's money towards uh, a wheelchair or some type of device that will dramatically impact the quality of their life. Uh, so it's, you know, I'm seeing it firsthand, which is a beautiful testament to our efforts, but also, you know, the word of the MS Society, making sure that they uh, put the right foot forward. That is really amazing. That just must make you feel tremendous to be able to help people in need like that. And and how do they reach out to? They reach out to you directly. I mean, because yeah, because I've made myself available. I mean, and, and willingly, right? I mean, uh, I think the one nice thing about Passion Vines over the years, we've we've sort of uh, positioned ourselves as a company that helps those in need. And so, and certainly the MS uh, Foundation and MS Society has been our main charitable drive. So it's no secret. And so I think, you know, I think over time, coupled with, of course, my mom live, leaving a, a wonderful legacy, people have decided to uh, use me as a resource, which I'm happy that they do. And I'm able to connect them to, uh, you know, whether it be someone or a hotline or, or even just uh, someone else that was diagnosed with MS that can just share what they're going through, right? Yeah. I mean, there's so much of a diagnosis that is incredibly scary, you know, and that's definitely something that my mom would remind me of all the time is there is a, you know, the fear of the unknown. And that's ultimately what MS, I mean, while, while it is a specific diagnosis, and as you mentioned, there's so many varying degrees of symptoms, you really, in the end, you may know that you have MS, but you don't know what kind of MS you're going to, you know, live with. And so, yes. um, Right. And so we know it attacks the central nervous system. We know it attacks the myelin sheath that wraps the central nervous system. But from there, I mean, it really can um, leave you in a position where somebody may look at you and say, oh, my gosh, you, you look great. You know, inside you may not be feeling great, um, right. but it, it could leave somebody that you would never guess that they had a mess. Whereas some or you could be living like my mom in a, in a wheelchair where you would clearly know that she's living with something. Right. So, yes. um but at any rate, but yeah, it does feel great as the old adage goes, right? The secret to living is giving. And I think there is nothing more precious than being able to just assist in the quality of someone's life because well, no one does blessed. that better than you, Michael. And I have well, to say, it's not like uh, you don't have a lot on your plate. You're running several yeah. businesses and you yeah. have a lot going on. Your dad, your husband, I mean, it's, you have a lot. And, and to be able to do that is really a true well, testament to the man you are, but also to the woman who raised you. Well, a amen to that. I'll accept that. And I'll also accept the help of a committee that we have that is totally mission driven. You know, I, I get asked a lot about how, you know, after nine years, how are you able to keep this thing going? And I think clearly my answer is because we have a committee that's committed, right? Uh, and, uh, and we have a committee that's actually committed, but also connected to the disease and yes. uh, whether we're living with it or know somebody that has it, I think those things are incredibly important in, in maintaining and sustaining, uh, a mission such as what we have with finding a cure for MS. Wouldn't it be nice to see? It really Amen. would. It, I know. I, it would be so wonderful. I get with, uh, help thinking so about many... it, yeah. 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 Are they getting any closer? I mean, where are we with this? Uh -huh. Do we know? That's like the right. That is the question. I will tell you that I I went to Washington D.C. roughly three years ago. Uh, I went to their big conference where people flew in from all over the world. Um, I have to tell you, I've never felt so humbled in terms of my intellect. Uh, but I sat <laughs> in a room with these people, uh, and all I can tell you is, if you know, I I feel like I have pretty good intuition. I, I could only. I could only understand maybe 30% of what they were talking about, but I was blessed to be in the room, but it, you know, I have good intuition. And what I felt leaving there is that we have some really, really committed, smart um, doctors that are leading this charge. And so I, you know, uh, my contribution to the room was, you know, thanks for having me and allowing me to sit in. Um, you know, I was sort of at the time yearning to know what was going on in these inner circles they they couldn't necessarily answer the question, the, the one that you just asked, which is what I also asked, which is how close are we? When are we going to end this thing? But I can tell you that they were optimistic about the funding that was being given, uh, that they were being granted uh, to achieve certain R&D, you know? And so to that end, I, again, it's all about the people and I trust the people and I have to trust that something good is coming. 
Oh, well, we can only hope. And we do have some amazing, fantastic minds right. in our nation and around the world working on this. So, you know, we can only pray and hope that there will be a cure for MS someday. And hopefully in our lifetime, it would be good Amen. to see. So if someone's listening, watching, and would like to donate or would like to participate and come to the event, where can they go? Sure thing. So uh, passionvines.com is probably the easiest location. Uh, if you click on events, you'll find the right notes. All the information is right there. At the same time, uh, you can find me at Michael at passionvines.com. That's my email address. Or you can find me in either the EHT or Summers Point location. Uh, but I'm happy to meet with you, talk to you um, and, and get you involved in what is an incredible fundraiser for MS. There it is, folks. He's putting his email out there. So that's it. <laughs> he is available to help. That is a passion buys is certainly the right name because you have passion for this and you can certainly see it in everything you do. So thank you so much. Thank Michael you, Robin, Bray. very much. Really appreciate your time. And thank you for watching Living Well with Robin Stoloff, watching or listening. Living Well with Robin Stoloff, empowering you to live a healthier life. Hope you'll subscribe and I'll keep you posted on my most recent episode. Until I see you next time, keep living well. Mm -hmm.